I've been using ARC for about eight months now, and two of my favorite things about it are that it keeps me organized and focused, even when life and work get a bit crazy. So if you could use a little bit more organization in your digital life, stick around and I'll show you how to get organized with ARC. If you're new to ARC, it's a Chromium-based browser from the browser company. This video assumes that you know the basics of ARC, so if you're looking for an intro to ARC, I've got a video dedicated to just that, and I'll link that above. Unlike last video, this is going to be a bit more of a live show and tell so that you can see how I actually use and organize ARC myself. Due to that, this is likely to be a bit of a longer video, but I'll put timestamps over here on the right, so feel free to jump around. Be sure to stick around to the end as I'm going to show you my favorite settings to tweak, as well as a bunch of keyboard shortcuts that are going to save you a ton of time. With that out of the way, let's get to our first topic, the sidebar. In its simplest technical form, what ARC does differently is how it organizes your tabs and bookmarks and that they've been unified into one shared concept and the line between them has been blurred a bit. Drag an open tab above this line and it'll stick around in future visits. Where this gets really powerful is when you add folders into the action. Usually what happens to me is I start working on a task and I open a handful of tabs related to that task and then I realize that this is actually a workspace for any time that I do this task in the future. So from there, I wrap them up into a folder by highlighting the tabs and right clicking. And now whenever I need to do this task in the future, I just grab this folder and I've got everything I need to get it done. Once you've done that a handful of times, you may find yourself quickly overwhelmed by the sea of folders looking at you from the side of your screen. So we need to try to tame that. I personally find that a modified version of Tiago Forte's para method works really well here. So for context, the para method is a simple folder structure for getting things done and being able to call upon them in the future. It organizes around four things, projects, areas, resources, and archive. I use this in Google Drive as well, and it helps keep long-lived archives organized by focusing you on your active projects, giving you access to common resources, and making it easy to call upon past projects in the future. For me, I find that the line between areas and resources gets a little too blurry in the browser space, so I've just combined those into resources. So let's clean up this workspace to get a bit of focus back. So I've got five projects, and let's say two of them are active, D and E, and A, B, and C are done. And then I, I use Readwise on a regular basis, and I want to have that in resources, and then I also check my own personal website. So let's go over here and uh, let's create a new folder. And so there's a keyboard shortcut for that. It's Control Command N. So let's just use that. And our new folder will be called Projects. And then let's create another one for resources. And let's create another one for archive. So from there, let's drag those to the top. And now we just need to move some things around. So A, B, and C. So A, B, and C are all done. And if I want to see them, I can. And so I can choose to either have them collapsed or it really just comes down to personal preference. From here, we can drop our Readwise feed into the resources and we can drop our website in there as well. Let's say I commonly like to look at my website alongside my Google Analytics. I can just open the website and then hold Alt and tap on that Google Analytics link and they'll be brought into this side-by-side -side view. I've made this window a little bit smaller for this demo, but usually you'll have a bit more room than that. If that's how I wanna consume it moving forward, all I need to do is drag that up into resources and now they'll stick together. I can also rename this. So if I rename this, this is like monitoring analytics. So that's one way to do it. You could also just have a folder around your projects and do it that way. Really, it just comes down to whatever you want. So like, for instance, let's grab these two and let's say I want to create a folder for them. So if I highlight the two tabs and then hit control command N, then I can create a folder for it and then wrap them all in one action, which is really nice. And then from there, I can throw it into projects or resources. So let's say that D and E are done. I can throw those into the archive and I don't need to see them. And then I'm just left here with these unfiled meeting notes. Because I've got this so well organized, the things that aren't organized stick out like a sore thumb. And in this case, it's a bit of a benefit. So the idea here is if I've got an upcoming meeting that I'm planning for, or a meeting that just concluded that I have follow-ups for, if I leave it here in the sidebar and don't throw it to the archive, it'll remind me to follow up on it. 
So again, this is the benefit of not having a ton of stuff here is the things that haven't been completed are almost like to-dos that you'll follow up on. And then once you have followed up on them, you can just throw those over to the archive. Speaking of tabs staring you in the face, when you truly wanna focus, I highly recommend collapsing this sidebar. You can do so just by clicking that button in the top left, or my personal favorite, just hitting Command S, which will make the sidebar go away. And then whenever you want it to come back, just tap S again. It's really great for just getting stuff done and not getting distracted. When it comes to commonly used pages, you have two options in this system. You can either pin them at the top as favorites, or you can put them in your resources folder. The pinned favorites look great, but they're a bit of a focus trap. I find that I instinctively open these whenever I load into Arc. So if this resource is a page that you should be checking more often than you currently are, then pin it up there. But if it's something that you wish you checked less often, then I'd say put it into a resources folder instead. Another thing that you should know about Arc is by default, any unpinned tabs are closed after 12 hours so that you start each day with a fresh slate. But if you're fearful of losing your tabs, you have two options. You can either pin the tabs that you wanna follow up on by dragging them above that line that I was mentioning, or you can just go to settings and turn this feature off if it gives you too much anxiety. Another way that I stay organized in Arc is by separating out the different parts of my life. So for instance, I have a space for work-related things and then another space for personal-related things. Historically, what I'd do here is I'd have two different Google logins, one for work and one for home, and I would swap between them based on what I was doing. But it's just become easier to actually have two separate contexts because the things that I'm doing in each of those mental spaces are very different. So I can actually have different profiles attached to each space. So let me show you first my personal space and then we'll talk a little bit about workspace. So my personal space is this yellowy gold color that I happen to really like. And again, I have a projects, resources, archive folder, and then some stuff that I'm actively working on that I need to do a better job organizing. And if I hover over this, I can see that this is my personal space. So all of my logins are unique to that space and none of them bleed over into work or vice versa. So all of my work stuff stays isolated from my personal stuff. And also I can mentally switch between the two. I think in the original ARC video I did, I mentioned how before work, I might be working on some personal stuff. And then during work, I shift into work focus and I'm purely focused on that. And then at lunch, I might work on something and then swap back and forth. And I can have this clean swap of both my tabs, my state, and all of my logins. So for instance, my email is tied to each. So this Gmail goes somewhere different than when I switch over to my work. And then I have a different Gmail here. Similarly, in work context, I've got a bunch of Jira links, I've got Notion, I've got my work calendar, I've got Figma, I've got Metabase, and a whole different set of projects and resources. And when the end of the day comes around and I'm ready to shift focus into more personal things, I can have that clean swap and everything's right there. Similarly, notice that my pinned favorites here are a bit different. Again, personal email, my YouTube dashboard, my Google Analytics, and then Amazon Affiliate. I also have notes in here that are unique to those spaces as well. So for instance, let's open up the script for this video. And this is just sort of an impromptu thing that I did. So you just hit Control N to start a new note, you give it a title, and then from there you just start typing. Historically, I used drafts for a bit to do this, or I would throw them into Obsidian and then remember to trash them or get rid of them. But I found that it's just easier in Arc because the browser is where I'm already at. And I already have this working space of tabs that I'm organizing. So I can actually create a note, drop it alongside a project, and then archive it all together. And I have that mental context of where I was when I was working on this. And Notes are fairly simple. Again, I can just type whatever I want. So let me just put some more Mipsum in here. And so you can do this both visually or with the keyboard. It's not Markdown, but it feels very Markdown-like. So I've got H1 through three, do links, lists, bold, italic, underline, and then I can drop images and links. But my preferred way to do this is through Markdown style syntax. I hit pound, pound, pound. That'll give me an H3. If I hit one pound, that'll give me an H1. So from there, I can do bullets or you don't have task list syntax, which would be nice. Hey, Arc team, to-dos would be great in here. Not that it's really my to-dos, I just like the formatting of it. 
You can also do numbered lists, that all works. And then you could paste in images if you wanted. So like if I needed to reference, so if I needed to reference this, I can paste it right in here and it, it's right there. If you needed to share this with someone, you can do it. Although I don't do a ton of that, but it's a thing if you want it. Once I'm done, I just drop it into the archive. And then if something really good comes out of it, then I can always throw it into Obsidian, which is my more long lived store. But either way, like if I close this and then hit Command T to open my tabs, my note is right there. And if I search for it, it'll also come back. So I can either search for it and find it, or if I spin open this archive, it'll be in there as well. The other creation tool that's baked into Arc is something called easels. So if I create a new easel, think of them as notes, but they're more of a grid board. So let's say my easel, and they have a couple nifty tricks in them. So instead of being a linear text document like notes, it's more of a visual whiteboard. So I can drop in some text, and then related to that, I can drop in some images. So like if I were to paste that image, that'll be there. I can draw arrows. Again, it's not the tool that I would use if I had a serious use case with this, but it's really nice in a pinch when you just need to work through an idea. Its best party trick is the fact that it can actually embed pages within it. If I hold Command and Shift, I can actually take a screenshot within Arc, but it's a bit more than just a screenshot in that it actually keeps context. So for instance, I can export it out as a flat image, but if I throw it to an easel, it'll actually create a live reference. So this is a screenshot of that web page, but I can also make it live. And if this were dynamic content, this would be fully accurate and active. So for instance, let me grab something that maybe is dynamically changing. Let me grab my Google Analytics, for example. And let's say I pinned this today. And I just want part of it. I throw this to my easel. This will now be a live look into my Google Analytics on whatever day I look at. So I just need to press play on it. And now when I come into this easel in the future, it'll always show me what's going on on that page. So a single page isn't all that interesting, but if you do this with a number of pages, it gives you sort of this composable dashboard on the fly. And it can pull from a bunch of different websites and bring all that information into one centralized place. Really cool, really powerful. I don't personally take advantage of it a lot, but I can see the use for it. The other feature that is really subtle, but very valuable, and it's a recent addition, is Peak. And so the way Peak works is, let's say you've got a pinned website that you use all the time. So anything above that line, anything above here, let me just open a different website. Open. ESPN for the sake of discussion. So you'll see this line here. Anything below this line is a temporary page and anything above this line is docked and kept. And so if I open a pinned page and let's open Readwise for example, and let's say I'm reading this article from Hacker News and I think it's really interesting and I wanna open the broader page. Because this is a pinned page and it's trying to open a new page, it's opening in this new feature called Peak. And what peek allows you to do is to peek into another page without having to leave where you are currently. So instead of opening another tab that you're then going to have to close eventually, it'll just open it as a modal instead. And then when you're done, you just hit command W and it goes away and you're not cluttering your sidebar. I know it doesn't sound like much, but it's an amazing feature and it helps so much, especially if like you're in Gmail, for example, and there's a link in here. So like, let's say, Oh, my healthcare has some explanation of benefits. If I go tap this sign in now, instead of opening a new tab to United Healthcare, I can do it all within here. I can take care of whatever I need to take care of. And then when I'm done, close it and mark that email done. Little thing that is such a nice quality of life improvement. The one feature of Arc that I don't use whatsoever is Little Arc. And it's this idea of a temporary tab that you don't want to contribute to a specific space. And it makes a ton of sense in theory. I can't take advantage of it because I use Alfred to open a ton of tabs. So I have a command palette that I can load anywhere to open commonly used pages. Let's say I get the inkling that I need to go to GitHub. I just hit command space to open Alfred and then I type git and it's gonna open up GitHub. If I have little arc turned on, it's not gonna open in my active space and that's really distracting. 
Let's say I'm in my easel, I just wanna open GitHub, I can just hit Git and then press enter. You can do this with Command T inside of Arc, and I do often, but for the pages that I use constantly that I have bookmarked, the way I map them in my head may not be the name of the page, or it may not be what Arc thinks about when it does the search algorithm. I have those bookmarked and then I just load those with Alfred. So for that reason, I have little Arc turned off. But if you don't have an odd workflow like that, then I would say leave it on. Shortcuts are where you save so, so much time. Many of these are not unique to Arc, but I would say listen in because even if you don't use Arc, many of these shortcuts will save you a ton of time in whatever browser you decide to use. Let me pull up Scrintle real quick. The biggest keyboard shortcut, in my opinion, to change is the default command N behavior. I personally prefer to just open a new window that is not docked to a specific profile. So let me show you what I mean. So commonly what will happen is Let's say I've got GitHub, but I need another copy of it for some reason. So if I hit Command N, that'll give me a new tab, and then I can paste in that, and then I can dock the window manager. Otherwise, I'm just gonna hit Command T to open a new tab, but this allows you to have two different Arc windows, maybe one on one desktop and one on another. So you can copy the url of the active tab with command shift c so i do this constantly i will slack someone at url i'll drop it into obsidian i'll throw it into Occiflow as a task i use this probably 20 times a day so command shift c it's on your clipboard you're good to go the other one i already mentioned earlier in this video which is toggle the sidebar so command s will toggle it on and we'll toggle it off you can jump to a specific tab with command and then one through nine, where that number is the order up here. So this would be one, this would be two, this would be three, this would be four, and then I believe this would be five. Yeah, so that would be five, six, seven, eight. And you just jump between them and it allows you to go very, very quickly to something that you already know on your screen. The other way I do this is with command shift bracket and that allows you to go to next tab or previous tab. And so like, if you just need to go up a tab, it's really nice or go down a tab or up to down to. Again, really, really simple, but really powerful. You can switch spaces easily with command alt and your left and right arrow keys. So left will move you a space to the left and right will move you a space to the right. And it will allow you to jump really quickly between different spaces. Obviously you can close your current tab with command W. You can keep this tab with command D. So like, let's say I got really excited about ESPN. I can move that above this line, with one keyboard shortcut, or I can toggle it away as well with command D. You can create a new note, like I mentioned earlier, with control N. You can go back a page and forward a page with command left square bracket and command right square bracket to go forward, which is really nice. If you've got a tab where you've left its default state, so like let's say I have ESPN pinned here, I open up this page right here, you'll notice that you get this little backslash. What that means is the tab that you've pinned and the URL that you're on no longer match, and it gives you a one-click ability to get back to that pinned tab. But let's say I've changed my mind and this is the tab that I want. I can right click and go to pin URL and replace this current URL. But more commonly what I'll do is I'll want to go back to what it was before. So if I hit control and then backslash, that'll reset it back to its default state. If I need another page beside this page, I can hit control shift and then equals and that'll open an additional window side by side. So let's say I needed this and I needed GitHub right next to it. Now I can have those both there and then I can hit Command S to drop my sidebar. And now, again, this is a bit contrived because I would never use these side by side, but you could see a use case where you would use two tabs side by side. From there, I can see that my window on the right is focused by this little brown border around it. So if I hit Command W, it'll close that pane. It'll keep my other pane open. And again, I can do this multiple times and I can have a bunch of different windows side by side if that was useful to me. The other thing is again, just a general browser keyboard trick at command L will open the command bar and you can change your URL. So let's say I instead needed to go to Mastodon. I could do that. That's not the right Mastodon, but that's okay. 
And the last one is once you've closed the tab and you realize, oh crap, I actually need that back, you can just hit Command Shift T to get that previous tab back. In that case, it was a split view, but oftentimes it'll be a tab itself. And lastly, you can screenshot any portion of a page in Arc by holding Command and Shift and then dragging the cursor out. And then when you let go, it'll ask you what you want to do with it. So those are my favorite tips for increasing focus and organization in Arc. I'm sure I missed some, so let me know what I missed down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. I hear it helps a ton with the algorithm. And as always, subscribe for more content like this in the future. If you're still looking for more focus in your life, my other favorite focus tool is the Remarkable 2. I've got a review and a bunch of tips and tricks on that that I'll link over here on the side. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.